Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It is fantastic to have you here because on today's episode, part two of working on the Scottish Claymore, again, the largest sword that I will have ever made, uh, which is a little petrifying, but we made up the Damascus for it or some part of the steel for it. Yesterday, we're going to continue working on the Scottish Claymore. Thank you so much for joining me. So the Scottish Claymore obviously is an extraordinarily large sword with a blade that, uh, that indeed can be over a meter long. So we need a lot of metal for it. And the amount of Damascus that we made up yesterday, it isn't enough for the whole thing. That's all right, I planned for that. And so because we don't have enough material in just the Damascus, so this is where we get to try something that I've never done before. We are going to take mono steel, you know, a, a single piece of alloy steel. In this case, we've got a piece of 1055 in the saw. I almost said sword. We've got a 10, blah! <laughs> Scared the crap out of me, Jamie. How you doing? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut off the 1055, we're gonna draw it out into a long bar, and that bar is gonna be able to go either side of the Damascus steel, adding a lot of heft to it, and hopefully making a very, very different and special Damascus steel design. So I first wrongly calculated the amount of material that I need to cut off of the 1055 steel And so I had to cut another piece out drew it out. That's fine We've got two pieces of steel on either side of our Damascus This means that as it stands once we weld it together We're gonna have twisted material here mono steel running on either side and we're gonna weld that together It's a very large billet right now Which is great because it means we have plenty of material to work with for this gigantic sword that we're making But it's also great because it means that we have a a little extra to get rid of some material up here to try something new. But we're going to talk about that after we make this forge well.
Oakley Doakley. So we have spent a good bit of time in the grinding room and I first ground off the sides just to check there weren't any major cracks, major faults in the world. It all looks pretty good. That also gave me the opportunity to get rid of the TIG welds that we put there to tack it all together since we're close to forging out the blade. But we also took the nine inch angle grinder and cut out a V of material like that. My friend Will Stelter, who of course you're familiar with, we worked on a pirate's cutlass together. Pretty fun set of videos on this channel. My friend Will Stelter let me know about this the other day. You can cut a V like this. We get rid of all this material that way. And this is the next step. This is exciting. This is something I've never tried before. I'm then gonna bend these two bits down, forming a point with unwelded material between it, our pattern running down the center like this, and our mono steel terminating at the tip. This then gets forge welded in this direction, and hopefully we can then draw it out, and hopefully it stays together enough for us to forge the sword. That weld will hopefully become invisible, and it'll be beautiful, because we're gonna have our pattern stretched out like this, and our 1055 surrounding the entire edge. It's time to go into the forge. I think it's welded. It's all looking pretty well together. And I think we can start forging out the blade, thinning it down, drawing it out under the power hammer.
This is really, really hard work. I'm starting out with the round side of my hammer and we're just working a little bit at a time. And I start with the round side, it's more aggressive. I work the edge, I flip it over, I work the edge again on the right hand side of the piece. Now, using the round side, we rough it out. I then go to the flat, turn it again, get rid of my scale, and use the flat side of the hammer to then refine the bevel over that kind of little six inch bit that we work at a time. There's no point getting the whole thing hot to do this. I just want to work a little bit at a time. And it is tiring, tiring work. Holy moly, these chainmail gloves, male tech industries, pretty helpful. It means I can get close to the thing, hold it in my hand, and rough out the bevels. This is, uh, this is one big sword. Let me tell you now. Woo, the Scottish, they don't mess around. So we've got a real potential problem here. It looks like I might have some really bad delamination right there. Up here near where the tang will be on the blade. Looks like it starts right about there. Goes up, up, up. Oh boy. Delamination is never ever good. <laughs> this thing is gigantic though. My goodness. Like it, woo, okay. So I'm gonna have my work cut out as I continue on that. There's plenty more forging to go on it, but now, as it's the end of the day, and as those delaminations are there, the next step is gonna be grinding it to make sure those delaminations don't go all the way through. If they do all go all the way through, we're gonna have to start again. But anyway, make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you're new, make sure you drop us a like, leave us a comment. Very excited to bring you along with this project, even if we have to scrap what it is we've done today, because it's been a lot of fun. It's been massive fun, massive, massive fun. And I will see you on the very next episode. Thank you so much.